Hello everybody, my name is Paper Pirate. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy in these trying times. And in today's video, I have a planner review for you guys. It's more of a flip through as well because I've had this planner for about mm, nine months now, about nine months. So I just wanted to take you through the Plum Paper Planner. And guys, this is one of the best planners that I have ever used. This video is not sponsored. You're not going to find a discount code in the description box below. Although, you will find a link to purchase these planners in the uh, description box below. So, if after viewing this video, you are as compelled that plum paper planners are miles above the competition as I am, then you can go purchase one. Um, but... I just wanted to talk to you guys about this today specifically because I know the school year is coming to an end and at least for me and I know for a lot of other people this is the time when you want to evaluate your planning system during the past school year if you're on a nine month school system because as at least for me I like to plan for a the period of a school year and then during the summer I don't not plan but I do sort of take a break from heavy planning reevaluate my planner system and make sure that everything was working and address the needs that I need to address to make things more efficient and better for my planning needs. So I just wanted to give you an insight into not only the plum paper planner, but their student edition section. So last year, I believe they started um, offering planners with add-on sections that I believe are $4.50 and I have the college add-on so I'll show you guys that in the video as well. So let's get started with the outside of the planner. Um, plum paper is most closely comparable to Erin Condren um, and to some extent the happy planner um, and then obviously I guess a bullet journal but to me it's more comparable to the Erin Condren and to some extent the Happy Planner. Um, so you get a spiral bound um, notebook style planner and one of the differences between the Happy, excuse me not the Happy Planner, the Erin Condren Planner and the Plum Paper Planner is that you cannot customize the coil and instead of having a laminated front cover, there are plastic flaps that cover the front and the back. The reason I only have one is because the front one broke off. So, and as you can maybe see here, the back one is kind of hanging on by a thread here. So it's probably good that this planner isn't getting thrown in my backpack every single day. And it is one of my points of, um, Criticism with this planner, I do wish that there was a more sturdy cover that you could get on this. I do believe that I will be buying a planner folio next school year, though, to keep my planner a little bit more safe and intact. And this front cover just is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, nice and sturdy. And I did get the dinosaur one. This is from the children's section, actually. They do have a Pretty nice line of children's planners, if that's something that you're interested in, but I just really love dinosaurs, and I knew that it was going to be unique, and um, if somebody saw this planner, I doubted anyone else on campus would have one like mine, and they would know it was mine, and I don't think anyone else did have this planner. Um, just to be safe, though, I did get it personalized, which is why I covered it up, because I don't share my name on this channel for privacy reasons. You open up the front cover and you get um, your weekly planner intro page and you can say who the planner belongs to. I filled that out so again I do have it covered. And then when we flip that page we get 2019 at a glance. This planner began in August of 2019 and runs through July of 2020 so I've got a few months left which means I will definitely be making a brand new order to plum paper because I do love this planner so much but you've got 2019 and 2020 years at a glance on two spreads. Next we've got our special date section. I use this for birthdays which is why I have the sticky notes, and there are going to be sticky notes throughout this um, flip through um, slash review because there is personal information in this planner because I do actively use it. 
Um, but rest assured, I tried to use sticky notes in a way that wouldn't obstruct your view of the planner and you would still get a pretty good grasp on all of the features in it. So full disclaimer there. Anyway, I use this for birthdays. You can use this for whatever you want. And there's kind of a duplicate spread on the second. Um, when you flip that page, it says ideas, plans, and goals. I never use this, and quite frankly, I have no idea why it's in here. Because at least to me, it kind of seems pointless. Um, if anything, if I had anything that would go in this category, I would just write it on a sticky note and stick it on my laptop. Which sometimes is the greatest way to stay organized. Um, especially if you just don't want to carry your planner around or want a portable to-do list. But that's neither here nor there. This is in here if that interests you. And then you've got a blank page of notes on the left before your fresh month starts on the right. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip you guys to July because I obviously have quite a few months worth of things in here that really don't matter. But this is a blank month so you guys can get the full effect. Another criticism I do have with the Plum Paper Planner is that you can't choose the color of the month. So, for example, as you saw before, August was green, July was is green, although it's I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera. It's not the same green, it's ever so slightly different. But aside from that, it is it was when I first got this planner very bothersome that I couldn't pick the colors because at least for me month color association has been something that I've always been able to control because before this planner I was bullet journaling for about two two and a half years so if I associated the color red right with the month July I was able to do that here the color green is July the color light pink this corally pink color is April I associate green with April, not pink, um, and uh, November is this sort of pastel blue color, I don't know if you guys can see it, or teal. Um, to me, November is brown, like it is kind of throws you off if that's something you're really into when you first get the planner. But they do have a neutral option if it really bothers you. And quite frankly, I love this planner so much that I almost don't even care about it anymore. So that just goes to show you how much I enjoy it. So you get this thick cardstock um, insert with a laminated tab per month. And then you've got this coded page um, and it's monthly highlights. So you get three goal bubbles. If you want to use that, you can. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I'm more of a long-term goal type of person than a short-term goal type of person, which is like, I don't know, that's just me. I sometimes find it hard to like have monthly goals, but I know most people aren't like that, so that will probably be helpful to you. You've got a place for birthdays. Usually I just transcribe what's on my special date spread over here so that it's easier when I'm doing my big monthly calendar which I will show you guys in a second. And then special events and things to remember. I definitely use these two more than anything else. Um, and then you've also got two blank boxes that you can do whatever with. Um, please note that gel pens, at least most of them, will smear like crazy on this coated paper. However, the paper quality in this planner is stellar, aside from this, and we'll get to that in a second. For this, I would recommend using ballpoint pen, um, Sharpies, maybe Pigma Microns will work well with this. Not You're really limited in the pens that can work on this page without smearing. Um, and then we get this line page over here, which is not this coated material, thankfully. And usually I use these lines for prayer requests since, especially in the age of the coronavirus, I have had a lot of things that I've wanted to pray for. And if you guys have any prayer requests ever, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will add them to my monthly prayer request list. Um, but that's what I use this page for. Feel free to use it for whatever you want. This is your big monthly layout spread, which is honestly super helpful, especially when I'm in school to like plan special events with my, um, my clubs, tests, quizzes, 
personal appointments. And this is my main point where I put everything. And then if I do need find I need a reminder, I will input it in my Google Calendar. But this is where I do the majority of my at a glance kind of monthly planning. And you get very nice large boxes, which I've had issues with planners in the past where the boxes were just too small for me to fit everything in them. And I just tend to have a lot of activities and large boxes are always a plus. Um, US holidays are placed in this planner. You've got a little next month at a glance in the bottom left, as well as a list if you need to use it. I usually just put stickers in there, um, but that's just me. Feel free to use it for whatever you want. Maybe you have a monthly to-do list or I don't know. And then we get into the actual week. Now, this doesn't have to be your spread. The great thing about Plum Paper is that they have tons, and I literally mean tons, of different planner spreads that you can choose from. Unlike Erin Condren or Happy Planner, where they only have a couple different configurations, and especially with the Happy Planner, I feel like you've got to go to Michael's and dig through all the planners to find something that might actually work for you, and then it's sealed, and then you've got to unseal it, and you're not sure if you're going to buy it. And it's just a really stressful experience, and that's kind of why I went with this over the Happy Planner. In case you can't tell, it was not a great time. Um, but there's so many different um, layouts that you could use from. And I know for me in the past, I've struggled with pre-printed planners because I haven't been able to find a layout that works for my needs. And as I've gotten into college and gotten so much more involved with other things, um, having time to draw out specific layouts for bullet journaling is just becoming less and less practical. So I did want to pick up a planner to use in conjunction with my bullet journal to make sure that I could still bullet journal but also have a planner for my needs and this absolutely fit the bill because I was able to customize it and not only are you able to pick your layout but you're also able to pick the title so if you wanted it to say something different here or here or in these boxes or in these boxes down here you can type it in customize it to the max it's wonderful I just personally chose to go with the basic configuration because it was cheapest um, but it's only $4, I think, to customize. So if that is something that would help you, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, another cool thing about this planner, I mean, it's a feature. I'm not sure if you'll think it's cool. But if you see here, the part that is still June, because July of 2020, um, it, the first day is on Wednesday, so Monday and Tuesday are still June, it's grayed out. Now, if you flip over to the last of June, the parts that are July are grayed out. And I think this is really cool because you can choose what month that you want to plan your week in and still have basically all of the same features each month. And I feel like this is very, very nice. I mean, it is grayed out, but you can still see everything. So to me, that's wonderful because I don't necessarily, as a student, always, my planning doesn't always necessarily fit in a monthly configuration. It's much more of a week to week kind of thing. So having the setup on both months just makes it a lot easier for me. And then this is the, I believe, vertical priorities layout that I have here. So you do get a little habit tracker up here. You got two boxes, um, priorities to do today. Usually I would just go ahead and list everything down. I didn't really use these two, could have done without them. But um, obviously since this was my first plum paper planner, I wasn't too sure how I was gonna use it. And I feel like since I've used it for about nine months, I kind of know what I want for next year. And I will be sure to share that with you guys on this channel if you like this video. And then in these bottom shaded boxes, I usually track my meals um, just because I found when I went to college, sometimes you forget to eat and that's not a great thing. So having a place where you can track your meals as a student was super, super helpful for me. 
And then at the end of the month, you do get another lined page for whatever purposes you want to use it for. Now I'm going to go into the academics section of the planner. And this was a $4.50 add-on. And academics, I wanted to say, is not the only add-on that you can get at Plum Paper. They have add-ons for um, meals, they have add-ons for exercise, social media tracking. Um, I think they have add-ons for your children, for homeschooling. You can get tab sticker add-ons, tab notes add-ons. You can get prayer tracker add-ons. You can get tons of different add-ons, cleaning add-ons, to-do list add-ons. I mean, really, I can't sit here and tell you all of the things that you can customize with Plum Paper because we'd be here all day and I haven't memorized them all. But I would definitely recommend if you're interested in these planners going on their website and checking them out because they are truly so interesting and so fun to customize. Also, side note, the paper smells like Popeye's fried chicken to me and Anybody who knows me knows that I absolutely love Popeyes, which may be a personal perk, but it's definitely a perk. I don't really know why it smells like Popeyes fried chicken to me, but it does. Anyway, your add-on sections are going to look just like your months. They're going to be tabbed if you want them, and if you don't want them, that's fine too. You can get them dispersed throughout the month. They don't have to be tabbed, but the academic section is. And I'm going to be showing you the college one because I'm in college. So the first page of this is a student overview. You've got your major. Um, if you guys didn't know, I'm an accounting major, possibly majoring in, or excuse me, minoring in religion. That's still a can of worms that I was going to open, but then COVID-19 happened, and here we are. Um, anyway, <laughs> academic advisor, advisor contacts. You can set some goals. Um, and I think I actually met most of these goals so that's pretty good let's go on over to the course overview and we've got you can put your course number and I cover in mine up because you know personal reasons um, but you can put your time your location professor office hours contact info credit amount you can have your little attendance tracker so you can put the dates that you were absent tardy and whether or not that was excused. Um, you've got your grade to pass, target grade, and grade achieved. Obviously, I didn't really use that too much because I did most of that sort of planning in Excel because um, through our school success center, we did get an application for that, so I didn't really feel the need to you know, write it down twice. Um, exam dates and whether or not those were done. Again, I did a lot of that in Excel, which is why I didn't really write too much of that down. Um, and then you have a little spot for notes. So you get 12 of these individual boxes. So that equals out to about six per semester if you get a two semester, um, if you get your planner for two semesters. And they also have six month options for your planner. So, you know, you got campus contacts on this spread and this kind of flooped down. Um, but yeah, campus contacts. So you've got your nurse, campus safety, registrar, library advisor, career center, financial aid, um, non-emergency police, and four blank ones. You get two final schedules. I obviously use the first one and not the second. You've got exam study trackers, which I will probably be utilizing for my summer school just because it's a more fast paced and I feel like reviewing in a shorter amount of time will be more helpful for me. But you can put your exam date, capper, and the topic, and however many times you studied. You get two spreads of that, two spreads of assigned reading. If that's helpful to you, feel free to use it. You've got a group project planner which most of my classes weren't really project-based, so that wasn't super helpful to me. But if you do have more project-based classes, then I think this will be helpful. Two spreads of that, two sp or actually six spreads of that, my goodness. Well, I guess if you are a project-based major, that will be really, really helpful for you. You get three spreads of brainstorming, um, just general brainstorming. I think it's three spreads. Well, yep, okay. And then you've got two spreads worth of internship hours. I think you could also probably use this for volunteer hours if you are required to volunteer for something. Your major requires you to do that, whatever. And you get two spreads, or one spread, two pages, worth of budgeting. 
and I used this in September and never again. So I'm going to try and be better about budgeting next year because I feel like I ate out a lot. And if I had had a budget, maybe I wouldn't have done that so much. And then you get two pages of important formulas and references. And really, I only use this in calculus because calculus was kind of a beast. Um, actually, you get three pages, 2.5 spreads, and then you just get a page of dotted um, notes. I used half of this to do note taking, whatever. Um, but I did want to point out the swatch page that I did do at the beginning of when I got this planner. And basically, nothing except for the Crayola marker that I soaked in water even bleeds through. So this is super smooth, super high quality paper. And let me show you guys the pens that I tested on this bad boy. You got Crayola marker. This is a Crayola marker soaked in water. We got two brush pens. Actually, this is also a brush pen. Paper Mate Inkjoy, pencil, pilot pen, mild liner, assorted highlighters. I honestly can't remember what these are. I think these are darker mild liners. Um, you got a Stabilo pen 68 felt tip pen. We got this Stabilo um, .88 fine liner. We got a fountain pen and all of it took the test of this paper. It's so smooth. It's so wonderful. It ghosts lightly, but you can't even see it like when you turn the page for a week, I can't see my pen marks. And that is the mark, no pun intended, of a good planner with high quality paper. You also get another dotted page. I just actually use this one to take notes. Go figure. Anyway, you've got a place to put your passwords, which I actually think I am going to utilize more because um, online security is really important. And I would rather just keep things in here than in the um, ambiguous Google password saver for now. Um, and then you got your contacts. You get two, or it equals out to one spread, but two pages. You have US holidays at a glance for 2019, 2020, and 2021. And 2021 at a glance. And finally, you get a fun little pocket, which I use to keep stickers in. They actually sent me these stickers for free when I purchased the planner. And they were summer stickers, and it arrived like mid-August, so it felt kind of weird to use these summery stickers. So I will probably use them this summer during my less busy planning season. So that's my plum paper planner. If you guys have any questions about this planner, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'd be happy to answer those questions for you to the best of my ability. I'll also leave the link to Plum Paper Planners in the description box below. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. I just really, really love their products. And one more thing that I forgot to mention, these are a fraction of the price of an Erin Condren planner. They still are an investment, but you're also not going to be spending like $50, $60 on a planner unless you get like a ton of add-ons. This planner was $36 and for $36 I've gotten a lot of great use out of it and I think it's well worth the cost especially for what you get. Anyway that's all for this video. I hope you guys found some use or some entertainment out of it and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.